scooch onto your scooch onto your head. Kristen and I'm here to talk to you about what else knitting and all things knitting related and knitting adjacent and maybe not so knitting adjacent. <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the podcast. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons who help keep this podcast up and running and a special welcome to any new viewers who are checking out the podcast for the first time. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I am a semi-retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, all-around knitting enthusiast. I live in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. with my husband and two little boys. And on the rare occasions that I'm not knitting, I also enjoy vegetable gardening, watching Orioles baseball, drinking wine, but it is mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. All right, let's start off this episode by chatting about some of the challenges that uh, I am working on this year because I have some progress to show you. So I have finished another knit from my Make 9 2020. This is the Vintage Prim Hat. It's a pattern by Andrea Mallory. This is a brioche pattern. Um, it is knit in fingering weight yarn. And of course, since it is brioche, it is reversible. So you can see on this, when I uh, have this side out, the darker color is the more dominant one. And then you can flip it and have the lighter color be the dominant one. So this was a fun and relatively quick project. Um, if you're not familiar with brioche, um, every round is actually two rounds. So brioche projects tend to take a little bit more time than other projects. Um, and um, of course the brioche, you know, can be a little bit tricky the increases and decreases, or in this case, just decreases, no, there are some increases, um, are not quite as straightforward as they are in regular knitting. Um, so this maybe took a little bit longer than a normal hat pattern might have, but I went through it very quickly. Of course, it is now 71 degrees outside, so I don't need it, but it is supposed to cool down again next week, so I might, not that we go anywhere, because pandemic. Um, you never know, though. So, second thing off of my Make 9, and I've got two, I've got this, and my Ursina. Um, I used a Merino single, actually two, <laughs> Merino single yarns for this. The lighter color here, is a merino single from Wool and Boon. The colorway is called Thistle. Um, might be a little, maybe see it a little bit better in the ribbing. It is just like a pale pink purple with some speckles. And the darker color it was one of the club colors from Fiber for the People on her merino single. And this colorway is called Garnet. So I think they complement each other really well. As you can see, the main kind of brioche here is this mock cable pattern. So it is just some increases and decreases that replicate the look of a staghorn cable. There is no actually cable, actual cabling involved. Uh, and then the opposite side of the hat is just a garter stitch. And I can't decide which dominant color I like better but I don't really have to because I can switch it up every time I wear it. I really like how these two colors in spots almost blend together. I think it gives it a really unique look. So, um, all right, I will put it on even though it's gonna make my hair look dumb. So this is designed to have kind of a loose slouchy fit. And I try not to wear the, the 
patterning directly in the center. I try to put it off to the side a little bit. And I say, I try to as if I wear this all the time, but no, I mean, just when I took the pictures of the finished object, that's what I tried to do. Um, so you can see it kind of slouches down in the back, but uh, even though it's a fingering weight hat, since it's brioche, that basically means it is um, almost like a double layer. So it is extra squishy and thick. The brim is not is also brioche, so it's not a too, super tight rib. It doesn't squooch onto your squooch onto your head. Sure, that's a word. Um, it doesn't, you know, come in real tight, so it gives you plenty of space to kind of keep it loose, pull it down in the back around the ears, and it also doesn't smush your hair as much. So I think this is really cute, and we'll get lots of wear. Um, Probably not again until the fall, really. Um, but like I said, you never know. Spring in Maryland, it was um, 80 degrees yesterday. And uh, there's a day this coming week that's only supposed to be in the 40s. So I may still get some use out of it. Um, so two things for my Make 9 already. Um, I did the Ursina, which is a... a pullover, then I went for something small. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, going to be the Ridgeview Tea by Carrie Bloomer. Um, but I am not going to cast on for that right away because I want to make some progress with some other things. And uh, I am, you know, I've already got two things done. So that's moving pretty steadily. And I don't feel like I have to rush, even though I do have um, two more full sweaters on my Make 9. Um, Think I'm keeping up a pretty good pace. The next thing I get said is going to be the Ridge VT, which is like a sweater but with no, you know, with short sleeves. Um, and I'm probably going to do the cropped version so it's not um, like a full length sweater. And then after that, I will be doing my Chrysalis Shawl, um, which is another two color brioche dealy. Um, the good thing about this. I don't think I have it here, but there's plenty of yarn left over and I like the way these work together. So I have already picked out a pattern um, to make with the leftovers. It's another brioche thing. I want to say it's called something like garter snake cowl. <laughs> um, is a pattern by Lavanya Petricella. And of course, when I do cast it on, I will definitely show you guys, but it should go. Uh, it'll be coordinating, but not matchy-matchy with this. So it'll be the same color, and it will also be brioche with garter stitch, um, but it won't be an exact match. It will not have this patterning or anything. So one challenge accepted and completed of something else off my Make 9. And um, I'm going to go brush my hair. Okay, that's a little bit better, I think. <laughs> Less fuzzy. Um, and the other challenge that I have going on in 2021 is that I set up a mystery sock project for myself. Uh, six mystery socks, meaning that I have paired up yarn with six sock patterns and put them in mystery grab bags. And I grab a bag every so often and I get a surprise sock to knit. Uh, I am behind on that, but I have started my first sock. And I don't know if it's good or bad. My first project is a more complicated one. Um, not complicated, just not as mindless as might have been ideal. These are the Plowline socks. This is a pattern from Knit Spot, I want to say. Let me just double check that. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is a pattern from Knit Spot that obviously uses two colors um, and a kind of twisted stitch to make this really fun all over pattern. The wind's getting so blown out. All over the leg. So I'm really happy with this so far. The stitch pattern is really easy to memorize, which is good. Um, if I have to keep going back and checking like a chart or something, I'm just not going to do it. Um, and I think the colors are working really well together. Um, the only thing I don't really like is that it's a cuff down pattern and I really prefer toe up socks, but that is just the way it, ha it works. 
out sometimes. You have to make exceptions. So um, I am using a skein of Skinny Dipping in some color or other. I want to say something like Rhinebeck Deja Vu or something along those lines that I bought at uh, Indian Tangled at Rhinebeck a few years ago. And then the contrast color is um, Nice and Knit. And this is a special edition colorway they did for a pop-up at the Knot House a few years ago called Crab Cakes. Okay. Is it getting blown out? That's annoying. Ooh. So I guess it's a little hard to tell since it wants to get to not look so great in the light, but the red and the pink go very nicely together. This is a, just a pale pink with some um, brighter pink and orange kind of speckles in here, and it pairs really nicely with this. So I have at least started <laughs> the first sock. <laughs> um, I'm not making super fast progress on it. It's not that I dislike it, it's just when you're working with two colors and a magic loop, things tend to get a little bit tangled up while you're working and um, it can just get annoying. So um, I really am happy with the yarn pairing and I will definitely switch my main and contrast color for the second sock if ever I get to a second sock, but uh, it's definitely a really cute sock pattern, just not a particularly speedy one. So um, at this point, I really should be on a second pair of socks if I want to get a six pair of socks done. I should be doing a pair every two months. Um, clearly that is not happening. Some of the other sock patterns are a little simpler. Uh, so I do hope to be making a little bit more progress on that um, in the near future. Like I said, I feel like starting with one of the more complicated patterns that I, not complicated, labor-intensive patterns that I had picked out may kind of undermine my sock mojo a bit, but I have at least started and I am very happy with it. So challenges are underway. All right, I have all kinds of stuff going on on the needles. I, of course, have my, um, Finish Fix Frog projects, and if you want more details about those, you can check out the Finish Fix Frog vlogs, and I will link to the, <laughs> the most recent one up here, however I'm able, whichever side that is, um, so you can check that out. Those are the long-standing whips that I am trying to work through throughout 2021, and I have been making some good progress. Um, I've slowed down a little bit right now, I think because some of the first projects that I did were some of the easiest and quickest ones to finish up. And now, um, you know, I'm getting into some of some projects that are not quite as close to finish. So I'm slowing down a little bit, but I am still making some progress there. Um, so as I said, check out those Finish Fix Frog vlogs if you want to hear more about that. But as far as other things that are on the needles, I don't have anything off the needles, but I have plenty on. So I am still working away at this test knit for Jessie Mae. Um, I've done all of the fiddly bits. If you did her um, ripple butt shorts, which is one of my uh, Finish Fix Frog long-term projects, um, you'll be familiar with this construction for the waistband. So that's just a little bit fiddly. Um, and once that was done, it has been smooth sailing. I'm now just increasing uh, out for the shorts, out to the legs. Um, and then once that's done, divide and finish off the legs. Um, this is looking a little kind of big and floopy, but um, this is a 100% linen yarn that um, is going to um, shrink up a little bit and soften up um, in the dryer. When you work with uh, linen, you actually are supposed to machine wash and dry. It actually uh, helps the fiber to soften up. So very happy with this so far. 
Um, I know she has given at least one sneak peek of these on her Instagram. You have to scroll back, I think, to when she released the outline tank. Uh, when she did that, she included a sneak peek of these with it. Um, so you can kind of see right under the waistband, it has this eyelid, uh, eyelid line that kind of uh, mimics the outline tank. Um, so still working away on this and it has uh, so far been a fun project. The yarn that I am using is Quince and Company Turn. Uh, and as far as linen yarns go, this is much nicer to work with than some other linen yarns. It's, it's not nearly as rough. So um, I've been very happy with that and I really love the kind of marl color that is going on with this. So um, I am actually hoping to have the shorts done by the end of March which is probably when you're watching this and they are likely not done. It was my original plan to have them done by the end of March. Now I think I'm going to go for kind of Easter. Like I said, this part is pretty simple now that I've done the fiddly bits. Um, so it's really just sitting down to do it. And my kids are on spring break this week, which doesn't necessarily give me more knitting time, but it does mean that at least I'm not homeschooling the one of them. So that could mean more knitting time. We will just have to see. So that is my major focus right now. I also had promised my dad a pair of socks for Christmas and I did finish one. Um, I can't remember if I should do this in the last episode or not, um, but I have finished one slipper sock. So this pattern is the pierogi slipper socks by Sarah Jordan. And the yarn I am using is Ella Ray Eco Tweed. Um, and you can see just kind of a gray with some really subtle bits of tweed in there. Very, very dad-like. I wanted sort of a, a dadish, not too garish color so that he can wear these however he sees fit. These are a sport weight. Um, so not necessarily designed, you know, to really go into shoes, but to wear around the house. Uh, and they just have this really cute kind of flap that comes up the back of the ankle to kind of wrap around the ankle a little bit. This is a folded over um, cuff. And this pattern is really straightforward. Um, you know, you use short, some short rows here and um, then heel flapping, you know, regular kind of standard heel flapping gusset and then plain to the toe. And like I said, with the sport weight yarn, this is knitting up nice and quickly. I do want to get this second sock cast on. I just know that the, the, the first part, you know, again, is just a little bit fiddly with that folded over cuff. So you are, um, casting on extra stitches because you're not, it's not just this width, you've got this circumference here, not just the circumference here. So cast on a lot of extra stitches um, and it's just a little fiddly in the beginning. So I am procrastinating, but I do want to get that done. It would be so nice for me to give my dad his Christmas socks on Easter. Um, I don't, well, like I said, you never know. This is a really quick knit. Um, I am not homeschooling this week, so maybe it will happen. I did have my dad try these on last weekend um, to make sure I was gonna get the right length and I think they are good to go. So half a sock done, a half finished object. And let's see what else we have going on around here. Um, I have made just a teeny bit of progress with my Clio. Um, so I think the last time I had just um, joined the two saddles to start the shaping. And so now I have done um, all of the shoulder and neck shaping and I am just knitting straight until, the, well not knitting, but working straight until the armhole. No more shaping, so it's just uh, straight. But there's a lot going on here. So you can see there's some 
kind of a slipped, that's not the word I want. It's like a mock rib pattern kind of here. Some cable, a slipped cable columns here. And again, it's getting a little blown out with my, with my fancy new light that uh, likes, makes me look less yellow, but apparently just blows out all of the yarn. Uh, and then it has this kind of woven pattern in the middle and then it the, repeats on the other side. So again, I'm not in any rush with this because this is this is a very uh, warm, rustic yarn. The chances of me being able to wear something like this before at least November are really slim. So um, this is just when I've got a few minutes. Um, again, I've got to sit there with the pattern. Uh, I think after I work a few more rows, I might have it memorized, even though there's a lot going on. Um, each set of stitch patterns is pretty straightforward. So I think if I work a few more rows, I might get the hang of it and not have to keep coming back to the pattern. Um, we shall see. But um, nothing major going on here. So if you're kind of, you're not sure how the saddle shoulder construction works, these, these parts here go over the top of your shoulder. So this is the back. So it goes around the back of the neck and these parts are gonna sit on the top of my shoulder like this. Um, but of course it'll look much nicer than that when it's actually a sweater. And then the last thing I did was that I did swatch for um, the new sample of my Going Steady card again that I'm gonna be um, re-releasing with additional sizes and a new sample and yarn that is not discontinued <laughs> Um, and in colors that will fit more into my wardrobe so I can actually use my sample. Um, so I did swatch for it, and um, this is just some Knit Picks um, Simply Wool, which is um, kind of your, your basic workhorse worsted weight yarn. I, um, I'm going to do, I think, a little vlog kind of tutorial deal on my favorite Knit Picks yarns because they have some really great ones and then they have some that just don't that just don't work for me so I don't love their wool of the Andes tweed uh, wool of the Andes tweed wool of the Andes worsted which comes in tweed and other varieties um I guess for starters I think it is too thin for a worsted weight yarn um but this the simply wool it comes in all these natural colors it's kind of like an eco wool it has that same you know little bit rustic quality that the wool of the Andes has um, but it is heavier. This is going to be um, definitely a true worsted closing in on Erin. It's still soft enough you know, to wear next to the skin. Um, so I'm a big fan of this yarn and um, that is what I'm going to be using for the new sample of the, the Going Steady cardigan and I am swatched and I don't have any immediate plans to cast on I don't need to. Um, I mean, I do kind of have a pattern with the new sizes sitting around waiting for me to do something with it, but you know, is anybody gonna be in a rush to buy a new sweater pattern in April? No, <laughs> um, especially a worsted weight, kind of bigger, cozy cardigan. So um, that is coming at some point. Um, but I would love to have anybody who's interested in test knitting the new larger sizes. If that sounds like you, size 2X to 5X, um, leave a comment or get in touch. Um, I would love to, to get some test knitters kind of going on that. And it certainly won't be a rush project um, because I have no immediate <laughs> plans to re-release the pattern. So that is, I think, I think that's it. I think that is what I have on and definitely not off <laughs> the needles in this episode. All right, even semi-retired pattern designers will have a pattern drop occasionally. So I do have a pattern pre-order to show you, I guess it is. Um, so I'll go ahead and pop a photo in here. This is the Whiskey and Rye Swancho. 
Um, so this is making its debut in the upcoming issue of Nomadic Knits. It is their issue number nine, Iowa and Nebraska. Um, if you're not familiar with them, they do sort of location inspired uh, collections from all around, uh, I think just the US, but don't hold me to that. Maybe they've gone abroad, I'm not sure. Um, and I was kind of bummed. They did a, they've already done their kind of DC, Maryland issue. And I remember seeing the call and I just didn't get a submission in on time for that. But um, I did get this one in, even though my knowledge of Iowa and Nebraska is limited to none. <laughs> Apparently it fits in well um, with the theme for their issue. So this is a fingering weight swancho that combines the ideas of color work and texture. So um, the V pattern, chevron, there we go. <laughs> the chevron pattern, when you're working that, um, the background, you are working with just a single strand of fingering weight and the foreground, you're working with the fingering weight held double with a Surrey Alpaca lace weight. Um, so it creates a low contrast because they're matching colors. Um, the colors of both yarns are the same. Um, so it's a low contrast in terms of the color, but it's a higher contrast in terms of the texture. It makes the chevrons kind of stand out from the fabric a little bit. Um, so um, this is a pattern that I was working on last summer. I actually had to mail it uh, to its destination while I was on vacation because I was <laughs> I was behind. I'm always behind. Um, that is the problem with with third party publications <laughs> is that they have deadlines and I often struggle to meet them. Um, but so this has been in the works for quite a while. I believe it's it's a swan show, so it is not kind of a, a fitted sweater pattern. Um, it actually has you know each size can accommodate. A, a wide range of sizes. Um, so I, I want to say that the pattern has three sizes. It might actually be four, um, but it definitely has a few sizes, but each size can fit a, a, a wide range. Um, and um, if you go ahead and look at their website and look at the pre-order information, you can actually, and on, on Ravelry as well, you can actually see some photos um, on two different size models modeling the Swancho and it's the same sample size. So you can kind of see how it's gonna fit you depending on, on your size. So I believe I knit, I knit the sample in kind of the medium, the middle size, I think so. Because it was just a little bit big, bigger than I would want for me. Um, and there are at least two more sizes than that. Um, it is worked from the top down if you're not familiar with the swancho, it is basically like a poncho with sleeves. Um, so you're they're just working in the round. It is designed, and actually I'm wearing a swancho today, um, but not a knit one. So it's just big, 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 getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Um, at some point you break for the sleeves and then you have sort of small sleeves that cover the lower half of the arm. And then it is uh, open in the bottom. And you can see that while my swancho looks pretty nice, underneath I'm just wearing an Orioles t-shirt. Um, and it's very, you know, it's like, it's very easy to move in. You can wear it as a sweater, you can wear it as a jacket. Um, very comfortable. And this, this one is extra comfy cozy with that uh, Surrey alpaca in it. So the um, pneumatic, and its issue is available for pre-order. It will actually make its debut uh, in April, a little bit later in April. Um, you may be able to find it in your local yarn shop. You can pre-order a digital copy through Ravelry. You can pre-order a um, paper copy directly through the Nomadic Knits website. Lots of other lovely patterns in that issue. Definitely go check it out. And of course, in particular, check out the Whiskey and Rye Swancho. All right, so it is a warm, sunny day. It's almost 80 degrees here. It's insanely windy. 
and I am getting my gardening going. So this is the first year I'm going to try to grow all of my vegetables from seeds. I um, got grow lights, so they're outside now So because I planted them. Um, and then I'm going to leave them out here because like I said, it's nice and warm today. Um, I'm going to leave them out here and then bring them in at night uh, once I get the grow lights set up. Ollie, you have to wait. Okay, and here are my dye plants that I am restarting. Uh, there are a couple more that I want to direct sow when it's uh, a little bit closer to summer. And then over here seems to be the only dye plant from last year that survived. Um, so I've left that in its pot. The dog has started to eat, or I suppose chew on all my plant pots, so that is another challenge. All right, so we got Zucchini, winter squash, cucumbers, hot peppers, uh, cherry tomatoes, and then on this side, tomatillos, and three different varieties of tomatoes in there. And then a few herbs over there. And over here, I did my herb pots and lettuce pots as well. And then put the netting over them for both the dog and the squirrels. So you can see I still actually have some cilantro from last year. And uh, that is my oregano that's already growing back. Um, so I've done, um, I've also got some, some bunching onions that are growing back, but I'll probably redo that soon. So I planted uh, lettuce and uh, mixed greens and arugula and garlic chives, which will be new. Over here is um, my raspberry bush, which you have to wait, Ollie. If you can see, it's starting to get some buds. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you can see, it's just barely getting some buds here. It's hard to zoom in. Um, so I cut away, I think, what I was supposed to cut away last year. So I should be getting some new growth this year, but I guess we'll see it's getting blown out. And over here is my pot of mint, and you can see the mint is coming back. So it will be mojito season soon. All right, and here's my very fancy <laughs> setup for my seedlings. This is, um, I wanted to put it out of the way. So this is in our, our guest room where the dog doesn't go. Um, I really need a table to put it on. So now it's on these old nightstands. And these are the grow lights I got. I got these from Amazon. I think they were $35 each. And, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. All right, just a little bit of news and notes. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that my signature e-course, Swatch Master, is now available as an independent study as well. Um, so the way I traditionally have run Swatch Master is that I offer it as a live e-course once a year. Um, usually in the spring and enrollment is open for a short period of time and then enrollment closes and we all work through the e-course together. There um, is a, a Facebook group or this, this year we decided to do a Slack group. There are weekly office hours where everybody gets together. Um, and again, this year we decided to do it with Zoom so that everybody can see each other and talk to each other. Um, there's like a workbook that we're working through together. You have the opportunity to schedule um, a consultation with me, a personal consultation if you want during the course. Um, there are some bonuses that go along with it. So that's how it's usually offered and it's usually priced at $40. And the independent study is all of the same instructional information, but without the bells and whistles. So no Facebook or Slack group, no office hours, no personal consultation. Um, you just get access to the instructional videos and the workbook and you work through it at your own pace. And it's only $20. Um, and the other good thing about the independent study is that you can enroll anytime and, can, and you can work at your own pace. You know? um, so a lot of times what happens with the, with the e-course is that people will sign up, they think they're gonna have time, and then they don't. Um, and so they still get all the instructional materials, but then they miss out on 
all of the interactive stuff. They miss out on the office hours and they miss out on the, um, the group talking to their fellow students and things like that. Um, so that is, you know, I know it's something that has happened with students in the past. They, they can't uh, work through it with everybody else in the class. Um, but some people actually just don't want that element. They'd rather just tackle things on their own uh, and go at their own pace. So now you have both options available. So Swatchmaster Live, as I call it, will continue to be offered once a year in the spring, and it will come with all of those interactive elements, a chance to interact with your fellow students, a chance to speak to me, um, weekly office hours so that I can address questions and concerns and and all of that stuff. And now the independent study, which um, you can sign up for anytime and you are just totally on your own, moving through things at your own pace. So I will include a link to my Swatchmaster website in the information box down below. And if you're not sure which of those options uh, sounds best to you, I even put uh, one of those nifty comparison charts in there so you can see you know, which one has what and which works best for you and check that out there. Uh, Swatchmaster um, is my e-course all about swatching engaged. So it is a really a foundational course about knitting so that you can get a handle on swatching correctly, checking your gauge correctly, and then using all the information that you're getting from your swatch and all of the information um, that your gauge tells you to knit better finished objects, particularly garments, since that's um, where you're most concerned about fit. Um, and it is for beginners and experienced knitters alike who have just always had difficulties with swatching and getting gauge. Um, and again, all that information is going to be on the website, so you can check out, see if maybe that is of interest to you. Um, but I think it's a really valuable course for setting a really solid foundation for your knitting, mastering those basics and applying everything you learn to everything that you knit for years to come. So check that out, Swatchmaster, now an independent study. All right, so I decided to move um, Chatterbox here to the end of the podcast so that uh, people who really don't need <laughs> the details of um, my personal life can just go ahead and, and peace out and move on to the next YouTube video. But those who um, maybe are more interested in those uh, silly everyday life details can stick around and hear a little bit of meander and chatter. Um, we are now one year. <sighs> one year of this pandemic, one year of being more or less at home. That is really hard to believe. Um, but things oh, are starting to change slowly. So of course, I haven't really done much of anything. We are still staying home and staying safe. We are not vaccinated yet. Um, but we are at least getting to start spend some more time outside as it's getting warm. I did go get my hair colored. I'm pretty sure you can tell that. Um, the place I went to, it's a place I went to years ago. And uh, when I was there, I found this, this great colorist. She always did a great job. She moved, she worked quickly. She was like uh, friendly, but not super duper chatty. Um, I was really happy with her. She moved to another salon and I followed her there. She moved to another salon and I followed her there. And then she moved to Texas. And that seemed a little bit unreasonable in terms of following her. So <laughs> I had to find a new one. Uh, I went to a place um, the last few times that I got my hair colored and it's just you know, not great. I just didn't get a great vibe from them. It didn't seem super safe. They just, um, just always had people hanging around in the shop wearing masks you know they were kind of half falling off and they did a nice enough job but it just wasn't really working for me so I decided to go back to the salon that I had been to before uh, and when I got there it was like you know call us when you arrive we'll check your temperature before we let you in and it was at least in terms of the um the COVID much more 
regimented and definitely safer. Um, and they did a fine job. <laughs> the if you if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen. They seem to have a lot of you know most salons have like hair stuff for sale, sort of in the waiting area, hair hair care products and stuff. And they had that, but then they had just other like really random stuff, which included um, a bong with SpongeBob on it, which just seemed really odd for a hair salon. I mean, it's not just a hair salon; it's, it's a hair salon and, and spa, so they do nails and and things like that. And I think, I feel like if you're going to lean that way, maybe you would offer like kind of fancy girly bongs, but it was just like SpongeBob smoking a joint. It was very, it was very weird and random, <laughs> but she did a really nice job on my hair. It was very reasonably priced. Um, she was sort of, I think she's not, um, she's not one of their like super experienced tech. She's, she hasn't been there quite as long. So, um, process was a little bit slower, um, but it was fine. I, you know, I will definitely go back there, but I'm still really baffled about the SpongeBob bong. I don't know what the deal is. Um, maybe after I've visited her a few times, I can be more comfortable asking. So I have to get my hair colored. Uh, today I cut the boy's hair. Um, Oh, I will put some photos in here because my children are cute and my haircuts are terrible. So God willing, the next time they need their haircut, we will be able to just go to a regular hair uh, barber shop. You know, before before the pandemic, we went to this place that does kids' hair. Um, and despite the fact that both of my children, they've gotten better, but they don't like it. And they especially don't like the clippers, even though I've told them, you know, it doesn't hurt, it's just noise, but they're both like the whole time, which I don't know what I'm doing and um, I'm not good at it. So the kids like, you know, that's just making it take longer and making it more crooked. <laughs> it's just, it's not my calling. I mean, true, I've only done it three times, but. No, I, I'm, I'm so happy to go pay somebody 20 bucks to cut my kid's hair. It's fine. So um, once we, if by the next time, you know, we can call the salon and, and see what's going on, if, what kind of protocols they have in place, whether the people have been vaccinated and things, I really, I really want to take them to a professional. I, I thank, thank God they're only six and eight and they really could not give a, a crap about what their hair looks like, but oh, if they were older, they'd be so ashamed. Um, so that is uh, always an adventure. And uh, other than that, things are pretty much the same around here. Uh, you saw the garden party segment, so uh, I will have some gardening and, and outdoor stuff to look forward to soon. Um, that is about it. All right, that is everything I have for you in episode 37 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Uh, everything that I talked about in this episode, links can be found in the show notes at maybeaperdawana.com slash ELO and Stitch. As always, a special thank you to my Patreon patrons who help keep this podcast up and running. Uh, if you are interested in supporting the podcast and the whole YouTube channel and getting some perks and freebies and behind the scenes peeks and things like that, you can find more information at patreon.com slash maybeaperdawana. Here on the YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it if you would like, comment, subscribe, share, all things that help expand the reach of the ELO Search podcast and the Maybe Better One Knits channel as a whole. If you are looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Maybe a Third of Wanna, and I will see you next time.